and welcome to another QuickBooks training moment with Steiner Business Solutions. I am Doug. Today we're going to talk about setting up uh, multiple users in QuickBooks. Um, you have the ability to set up multiple users so that each person has to log in separately. Whether this is um, you have QuickBooks installed on one computer and everyone has to share that one computer and log in and out uh, one at a time, you can still set up multiple users so that way each person has certain access rights. You can grant access to certain parts of QuickBooks but exclude them from other parts. Um, but it also allows you to track the transactions that each and each person does. So if you want to see who entered this bill or who entered this journal entry, there's an audit report in QuickBooks that will allow you to see who created every transaction or deleted a transaction. If someone deletes a transaction, you can even look at the audit report and see who was it that deleted it. So that's those are reasons for setting up um, multiple users if you're sharing your QuickBooks file. You have the ability to um, network your QuickBooks file and have it being used uh, concurrently by multiple users on different computers at the same time, but that's not what we're talking about here. You still set up multiple users for that, but that's a whole different conversation about networking your QuickBooks file. We're just talking about setting up multiple users here. So to do that, we're going to go up under Company, and we're going to go down to set up users and passwords. Now, uh, if you want to just change the password of the current user that you're in, you can just hit change password here and it'll ask you for the new password and it'll ask you to set up a challenge question answer um, to reveal the password if you happen to forget it later. But we're going to go into set up users and it's going to show us how many users we have. In this case, we just have the one main admin a uh, user that QuickBooks comes with, uh, which is who we're logged in as right now. Over here on this side, we have the options to add users, edit them, delete them. Um, so what we're going to do is add a new user. So we're just going to create one for a man named John, and we're going to have password. We'll just do an easy password here. Alright, in the next section, it's going to ask us what areas of QuickBooks do we want to give somebody or give this person access to. So we have the option of all areas of QuickBooks, which is everything, obviously. Um, we have the external account. So if you're creating a user in your QuickBooks file for your accountant to use, this way they have access to everything except sensitive customer data like credit card numbers. So they wouldn't be able to see that if you do keep credit card numbers in your QuickBooks. Or you can be more specific here and we're going to say selected areas of QuickBooks and we're going to go through all the different QuickBooks modules to decide what we want John to have access to. First module is sales and accounts receivable. Do we want him to have no access, full access, or selective access where we could choose create transactions only, create and print transactions, or create transactions and create reports. Next screen is going to be purchases and accounts payable. So we're, this is our AP. Again, no access, full access, or selective access where you can create, create and print, or create transactions and create reports. When we go into checking and credit cards, we want them to be able, be able to print checks, make deposits, and enter credit card charges. Again, same options here. Inventory. We want them to be able to go in and and create purchase orders or receive goods or adjust inventory. We go through these options here of what we want them to be able to do. Payroll and employees. Do we want them to have access to payroll at all? Maybe we don't. We turn set up to no access so that way they can't see any of the employee information. Or we can go through these options here of what we'd want them to be able to do. Then there's sensitive accounting activities like transferring funds, making journal entries, or online banking. We want them to have access to these functions. And financial reporting. Do we want them to be able to do financial reporting? Creating reports or creating or printing reports. Then we go in here where do we want them to have the ability to delete transactions? Yes or no. This will override all modules. Do we want them to be able to delete transactions? Do we want them to be able to enter things and print things but not delete them? We can turn that off here. Um, and a little more specific, what about transactions that were recorded before the closing date? So let's say you've closed your books at a certain period. Do we want this person to be able to make changes or delete things prior to that? You can set that. Once we're done, 
kind of get a little overview, a little chart of all the things that they do and do not have access to. And we're finished. Now John is set up as a user. And now every time you try to log into QuickBooks or open QuickBooks up, it's going to ask you to enter either in the name admin or John. And then there's and then the correct password to go with it. Now you have two users. You can set up multiple users here. Um, and that way you can track who's doing what and you can limit the access that your various employees have to QuickBooks. I hope this was helpful. Uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.